Okay, so for this problem, uh, think about whether this is a steady or unsteady uh, problem. This problem is unsteady because uh, it can't continue forever because the water is going to boil out and then it's, it's different than what, the way it started. So this one's an unsteady. So what you want to do is ask yourself, how are you going to solve this problem? Give that some thought. Because they want to find the uh, rate of heat transfer, uh, I am going to uh, write an energy equation. See if you can write the energy equation for this. Okay, so I'm going to write energy, not the energy rate. I want the complete amount of energy. Uh, that's typical when it's unsteady. You do the whole thing. Uh, so the amount of heat energy that is given to this thermal energy from heat is the rate that the, the, the heat goes in times the time that you apply it. So this would be like watts, so that'll be joules per second, for example, and then you multiply by the, the length of time. That'll be the energy that goes in because of the Q. Um, and then there's energy that leaves up here from, the, from the, the vent. And so you have some mass that's leaving. I don't know, uh, it's not the rate, this is the total amount of mass that leaves. And this is the enthalpy that leaves because it's flowing. So it has U and it also has some flow work. So that's the energy that's leaving. And that equals the final energy that's in the system. So in the final system, you have some mass and some U, no H in here because this is not flowing. It's only flowing up here. So it's mass times U uh, minus the initial energy, which is the initial mass times the initial U. Uh, I've circled the things in green that I'm hoping I'll be able to look them up. The question is, do you think we can? Give that some thought. The unknowns are the things that are circled in blue. So I've got one, two, three, four blue things. So I need some more equations. But think about whether or not you can look these up. I'm pretty sure I can look these up because they tell me the, the initial volumes of the masses that are inside. And I know it's going to be saturated because it's a mixture. So I'm pretty sure I can get the U1. Uh, the U2 uh, is going to be when uh, the very last little bit of water liquid is gone. So that means that what's in here is still saturated, but it's all going to be a gas. So I'm pretty sure I can get U2. Uh, the H that's exiting that is going to be all gas, which is the, at this saturation, uh, at this pressure. So I'm pretty sure I can also get HX. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I can look these green things up. But now I still have too many unknowns. I need more equations. Think about the equations you're going to write. One of the equations I plan to write is the mass equation. See if you can write the mass equation. For the mass equation, I have mass that's leaving the system, which is the mx, and that's a negative because it's leaving, and that's equal to the final mass that's in the system minus the initial mass that's in the system. All right, so now I have two equations. I need more because uh, I still have four unknowns. That's assuming I can get the green, which I think we've talked about. Okay, so what else are you going to write? I'm going to use the, uh, the little v's, the little volumes, and I'm going to write an equation between the big volume and the masses and the little volumes. See if you can write those. Okay, so initially they tell me that the gas contain is, is uh, half of the volume. So the big volume is equal to half of uh, uh, four liters. So I'm gonna use standard units. So I divide the liters by a thousand. So uh, initially, it's the mass of the gas at state 1 times the little v of the gas at 1. That equals the half of the volume. And you can do the same thing with the liquid. All right. And again, uh, I think I can look up these greens. I think I can look up these guys as well. So now I have uh, six unknowns because I've added two more mass unknowns. But I've uh, got four equations now. So I'm still needing two equations. Think about what you want to write. You can also write a mass equation very similar to the red ones uh, for the uh, final state. Um, so see if you can do that. At the final state, you have the whole volume being contained by this, uh, uh, this gas, uh, little V2. 
So you have the mass at 2 times the uh, specific volume, and that equals the total volume. So now I've got six unknowns and five equations. You need something else. What is missing? Give it some thought. There's still one more mass equation. Can you find it? Aha, here it is. The mass at 1 uh, at, the, at the initial is equal to the mass of gas at 1 plus the mass of the liquid at 1. So now I have six unknowns and I have six equations. So as long as I can look up all of the green things, I'm good to go. See if you can find the values in the table. I plan to get the stuff at point one first. I would need the, because it's a mixture, I need to know the quality, the value of X. The value of X is equal to the mass of the gas divided by the total mass. Can you figure out what that is? Okay, so here's the equation for X in terms of the mass of the gas divided by the mass of gas plus mass of liquid. That's the value of X. With X and with P uh, at the initial, the initial P, you can find all of the values of, uh, uh, for state one that you need. Uh, what about the exit? Think about how you're going to find the exit values. At the exit, you know it's 100% saturated gas, and you know the pressure is the same as the, uh, uh, what was given in the problem because it's all the, the same pressure inside, 175 kilopascals. So you know the quality is X equals 1, so it's all gas, and so you can easily look up HX. Uh, what about at state 2? Can you figure out the properties at state 2? At the end, it's 100% saturated gas. There's no liquid left. So uh, you still know the pressure is the same as it, it was at the, at the beginning. Uh, and so now the quality is 100% or x equals 1. So you can also look up all the values for uh, state 2. So the next thing is to figure out what table we're in and look up the values. See if you can find the values. Okay, I'm using table A5. This is saturated water. Uh, I'm looking for the uh, initial values. I know the pressure is uh, 175, yeah, 175 kPa. So I'm going to scroll down here until I find 175 kPa. There we go, right there. Uh, I'm going to pull off, because this is a mixture, I'm going to need the liquid and the, the vapor versions. So I want the, vol I want the volume. So here's the volume, uh, 001. Uh, I need the volume of, a, of the gas, 1.0037. Uh, I believe I also need the U's. So I'm going to get the U for a fluid, 486. Watch out for the units. The units are kilojoules. So I'm going to multiply this one by 1,000. I also need the gas, again, because it's a, a, a mixture. So 2524, multiply it by 1,000 because of the units. I also need the H, so I'm going to get the H of the, flu of the fluid, 487, and I'm going to get the H of the gas, 2700. Again, multiply all of these numbers by 1,000, except for the volume, of course, but multiply all your H's and U's. Okay, so that's how you find those, those properties. Okay, so uh, here are the, the properties that I uh, read out of the table at state one. Uh, the liquid volume, the gas volume, the liquid uh, U, the gas U, and the H gas uh, right here. Those are all read out of the table. Okay, so let's go get state two. At state two, it's the same as one, but it's all gas. And so the H gas two is equal to H gas one. So those are the same right? It's also uh, the same volume because it's the same pressure. It's just all, all gas. And so it's the same uh, volume. The U2 is the same as the U gas at state two. All right. At the exit, it's the same as point one. The H exiting is all gas at the same pressure as uh, state one. So basically it's H gas uh, two, which is the same as H gas one. So you have all of these uh, values uh, that, you, that you need here. And the next thing is to try to solve it.
So how are you going to use these numbers to solve your equation? Okay, so what I'm looking for is I'm looking for easy ways to solve these equations without having to do them uh, all at simultaneously. So the first one that I saw was uh, this one here. I said, okay, uh, I can go and get mass 2 because it's the only unknown. So I'm going to bring it down, follow this black arrow, and I just copy it down, uh, and in it pops right here. So this is the equation from above, uh, and uh, I know the V2, which is right up here. So you can easily calculate mass 2. Okay, so now that you have mass 2, what are you going to do next? What I did was I keep looking for equations that have a uh, few things in it. So I'm going to pull in this guy uh, right uh, here uh, and also this one. I'll just bring them both down. Okay, because I've got the two guys in green so I can solve for the two blue guys, the two masses. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to copy those formulas down here. So here's the one of them and, uh, and then the other one right here. So there's one equation right there. I can take the V gas one, which I've already looked up, V gas one right here. Uh, and so that's 1.07. That gets me the mass of gas at one. And then I've also got the second equation uh, from up there. Uh, so uh, mass of the liquid at state one, all right? And then you just plug the numbers in and you get the, the two masses. Now that you have the two masses, you can use the uh, equation for X, uh, which was given up here uh, in green. And so I just copy that green guy down right here. And uh, since I have the two masses, I can plug them in and calculate the, the quality or the value of X. So now I've got the X. Now that I have X and I have pressure, I can then go, or excuse me, I have the liquid and the gas values. I can go get the, uh, the, all of the values at point one if I need them. Okay, so uh, what are you going to do next? What I did was I went and got the red aha equation right there uh, where I just add the two masses together and uh, right, right there. And uh, so I get the total mass uh, at the at point one. Okay, now keep going. The next thing I did is I went back up here to find this blue equation for the mass that came out, mass exiting. So I, I use this one because now I have the two masses that I need. And so I can solve for the mass exiting. So I came down here and uh, right here. So this is the, the, the blue mass equation and I can find the mass that exited. So now I know how much mass left. Okay, so now what's next? Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is go up here and get the energy equation that I wrote, the black energy equation. So I just grabbed that and copied it down and then I'm going to plug in. So let's copy it down here. And uh, so here's the energy from the, the top page, copied it in. And now I'm just going to plug in numbers of what I know. So uh, here you have uh, the, the uh, time is uh, one hour. So I want it in standard units. So I convert an hour into seconds. So uh, that's the time. Uh, I have the mass exiting. I have the uh, H exiting. I have mass 2. I've got all of these numbers, so I just plug them in. The only thing I'm missing is U1 because I need to use the quality, the X, and uh, calculate the U. See if you can do that. Here's that quality equation uh, that I used before. It's also possible to use this uh, spreadsheet uh, to find the, the mixture uh, so you put in the fluid, the gas uh, properties, and the X, and uh, that'll calculate that quality equation, the X equation for you. Um, and uh, so anyway, you can find the U1 uh, fairly easily. Okay, so now just take all of these numbers and plug it into the energy equation and solve for Q. Okay, so the final answer is the Q, the heat, that uh, the maximum heat you can put in there without drying it up is... Uh, uh, 1163 tools. That's it.